Hero Club presents Los Inglobanables de Tokusatsu. Hello and welcome to Los Inglobanables de Tokusatsu, Hero Club's first podcast on its site. I am your host and co-creator, Wheelchair21. Tonight's going to be an interestingly small and possibly short episode. But nevertheless, I digress. So joining me tonight for this episode is the original Mike, Jenner the Joker. I know. I'm returned. I've been resurrected by the Dragon Balls. And then yes. I'm going to go die again. You're yes, welcome. He is here. As well as the second Mike, Sound Out 12. Yeah, I thought it was good to bring him back because for a while it was just kind of lonely without him. Yes, we have like the crazy Acon Mike song. and Mike's. Yep, it's going to get really crazy and wild in here. And just to add to the insanity, we also have the fourth member of our group. Technically, it's not Project, but it is somewhat just as insane. Visible Ninja. Ha <laughs> You have discovered my one true weakness. Police. Well, yeah. All right, so on to tonight's episode. Since not all of us have seen practically that many Ultraman series outside of possibly myself and or Mucha, Tonight's going to be actually a really good one where people had to do their homework, whether it be metal or sound out, where even if they've even seen like one or two or three series, they could still search up a kaiju that fits their fancy and put it on this little so-called list that we're doing. Because tonight we're making Lojor Battle Nizer. For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, in the Ultra series, specifically the Mega Monster Battles, and moving forward in the Ultra series featuring, you know, Belial, there's these things called Battle Nizers. Belial has one called the Giga Battle Nizer, which is a giant bow staff that can hold up to several kaiju, like over a hundred. Whereas the basic Battle Nizers, at first, are like small little, like, I guess you would say, like, recording devices that, in a sense, act like a Pokeball system to capture three kaiju. And then eventually they become more like a weird Palm Pilot upgrade called the Neo Battle Nizer. In the series, you can, like I say, store up to three kaiju of any kind, practically. You control them, and the only way you can actually use them is if you're actually a Rayonix, which is usually someone who has Rye Blood Blood in them, and so on and so forth. That's just the base gist of it, and we're going to be creating our own teams. Now, we actually made some guidelines, well, specifically me, so it actually made it harder on myself, someone who's seen several Ultra series, as well as just everyone in general from not picking maybe two overpowered characters. So in this case, you have it that, first off, you can't actually choose kaiju that were used on Ray's team. You can't use the main base three, which were Gamora, Ella King, or Litra. R.I.P. I was talking about Ella King, man. R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah, because he died and was replaced by Miraculous in Neo. So in this rotation, you can't have those three. On top of that, you can't have any Chimera-like kaiju, like, say, Tyrant. You can't have any of the actual mechas. You can't have, like, King Joe. You can't have Galactron. If they're, like, sentient mechas or they're just mechas in general, you can't have them. You can have cyborg-like characters, but you just can't have those options. On top of that... He really fucked me over with that one. I was going to pick King Joe. Exactly. Bullshit happened. And then, on top of that, you can't really have big bads in the case of not, like, say, Zeton, but I meant, like, anything that was too unwieldy, too realistic. Stuff like Zogu from Gaia, Ganathorpe from Tiga, anything that was, like, a large CGI monster, that was off the table. Like, you could still have certain final bosses, like I said, Zeton, Pandon, but you just can't be, like, going, oh, I'm going to choose Ultra Killer Saurus from the Mabius movie. No, you can't choose, like, these huge gargantuan creatures. Well, that changes my entire list. My list is yeah. ruined. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so with that list and rotation, that was practically most of the rules that you had to follow. You just can't do that. No Sajins. All the characters or kaiju have to be specifically from the Ultra series. So no Mirror Man, no Fire Man, no mm, yeah. Red Man. Yeah, Baby, yeah. Baby, done, done. See, that's why you it. fucked me over again. Goro yeah. Moxie was going to be my lead. He was going to get the power-ups. He was going to make everybody have hair dryers in their head and become delinquents. I was going to rule the world with them. And and on top of that, and on top of that, this is a last minute rule I put into this thing is that we each have to choose who's like the team leader who would receive their EX form slash their Rionic burst form. 
So that's pretty simple, though, because we're following like kind of the narrative that was established in the Mega Monster Battle series. So you have that as your entire lineup. So like we said, that's how it's going to go down for this episode. We already figured out the rotation for this actual team choosing, which is going to go Mucha, Sound Out, Metal, then myself. And then when we're all done discussing and talking about our teams, we're going to then talk about some submitted ones since we did put out the question on Twitter for people to give us their actual teams. And then we're going to talk about how our teams beat their shit out of theirs. Yeah, true. That's what you want. Also, there was one other rule I forgot just now. I don't know why I forgot this one. This is actually a really interesting one. We also have the rule of no real duplicates. Like, we can duplicate one. So say, since Mucha starts first and Sound Out has a similar kaiju, he can use that kaiju. However, if Metal has that kaiju, he can't use it. But if he wants to use another kaiju that Mucha had, or another kaiju that Sound Out has, he could put it in his team. So eventually someone could end up having a full team of three duplicates from every other person on the show. But I don't know why anyone would want them. mine. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, some of the fan votes actually said some of the ones that you want, which is kind of crazy. Nevertheless, let's get going with this episode. Starting it off is obviously Janitor Joker, so everyone, go on mute. Man, it's been so long, and now I have to start off a podcast by talking about my team of kaiju experts. And I can't just pick all Godzilla because he's not an Ultraman, or is he? Dun 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 dun. That's right. I found a loophole in this bullshit logic that Wheels has created. And that's why I picked first in my little monster battle team. It's Gomez, the first kaiju in Ultraman, because he's a suit from Godzilla. And he also is pretty cool. He does all, like, all those little things that he destroys bridges. And he can go through underground. He's my ground expert. He's the underneath guy. He's like Baragon if he wasn't killed by Frankenstein. That's really important to me, because I don't want to get killed by Frankenstein. No one wants to get killed by Frankenstein. I don't want to get killed by Frankenstein, especially the Japanese Frankenstein, because that's just weird. My next creature was another suit of Godzilla's, the most important suit, probably the most infamous suit. And when I submitted this uh, Monster to Wheels, he immediately understood, because I said it was Fingoji. Now, what the hell is Fingoji? I'll tell you what Fingoji is. He's the greatest thing ever. He's Jiras. The ultimate killer of getting killed by Red Man. And getting his fin ripped off by Ultraman. Okay, he's not really that great. But he's tragic. And I like tragic people because I'm a loser. And so is he. So we really have a mutual bond with each other. And he has, like, electric ray heat beam. So that's cool. But he kind of sucks at aiming. So I have to work on that. And then my last creature, who is the leader of my group. And I don't know why he's the leader of my group. That's a very dangerous proposition I'm making. Because he was a fucking pain in the ass in the movie he was in. I'm talking about the one from Ultraman The Narcs. The Beast The One. The one that can adapt to any situation, adapt to any living organism in the universe. Because I like to have adaptability. It's very important to me. If he can learn how to teleport, that'd be great. No one learns how to teleport, though. That's a sad thing. But he can absorb. And absorbing is a very good power. And if I can actually make him increase his power tenfold and even ten thousandfold, then maybe I can actually make Goromok King and have the Link that's run the world. Yes, I can do it. I can do it. Thank you. Well, that was an interesting TED Talk right then and there. That was very interesting indeed. My team's very important, Wheels. You see, it's (laughs) it's all circumstantial. I have GRS, my Aquaman. I have Gomez, my ground man. And I have the one, my everyman. Really, I have everything. All right, we'll talk a little bit more about your team when we do the overall us evaluating each other's teams once we're done here. So let's hand it over to Sound Out for his interesting take on his three choices. So going to my team, it's got a consistent theme across the board, and you might pick up on it after a certain point. So first up, my team leader is going to be the kaiju known as Horoboros. This was one of the uh, stronger kaiju that Ultraman's Rosso and Blue had to face in their series. And uh, I always liked the fact that he had, like, the evolution ability of going from, like, a quadrupedal uh, wolf-like form to a more bipedal werewolf-like form, which kind of, like, allows him to have a little bit more adaptability in combat, which I think was probably one of the coolest aspects about him. And I'm putting him as the leader because of that evolution kind of idea. So for EX and such, it kind of like can boost that already established evolution ability that he has. The next pick is Helberus. Now, Helberus recently debuted in Ultraman Taiga, 
And Helberus actually kind of complements uh, Hodoboros in a lot of ways because Helberus can do more projectile stuff, stuff from a distance, like even a attack like Hell Slash, which should be a melee attack, is actually done at a distance as well. So it kind of complements the fact that Horoboros is much more in your face with a lot of his different attacks, especially in his more evolved form. And Helberus is more ranged, even though he looks more like a stockier kind of character. Both are incredibly durable, which really helps to kind of give the team an overall uh, large strength. And the last kaiju I'm adding to my team is Galbaros who appeared in Ultraman Nexus. Now, this monster, similar kind of theme of big, stocky, but able to do a lot of damage. Galbaros's uh, ability of hypnosis can help work in conjunction with the strengths of Horoboros and Helberos, uh, and they all follow a similar kind of naming pattern, ending in os sound, which is definitely my entire theme there, is, is just going for that os sound. But overall, I think that they can complement each other in a lot of ways, and a lot of their abilities kind of play off of each other to kind of get a more well-rounded team within a consistent theming and style. All right, I like where you're going with that. Even though I think Horoboros, while he is slightly a wolf, he acts more like a monkey if you ever paid attention to him. Oh, so he does He shit. does act more like a monkey, but he is werewolf theme. Yeah, he's supposed to be but, werewolf But does theme, he do the monkey? See, that's very vital. Yeah, does it's very do... vital. Does he go all Johnny Bravo and go... <laughs> 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 I'm sure Rosso and Blue really liked it when he did the monkey and beat the crap out of them. Well, they deserved I mean, it. They, did. they, they didn't want to take his shit, so he dealt it back to them tenfold. And that's why Horoboros is amazing. All right, then. So, Visible Ninja, what's your wonky, wacky team? Wacky, wacky team. Well, first, I have to curse out Mucha for stealing my idea. I didn't steal any ideas. I just steal people's memories. Yeah, yeah no, he didn't steal an idea, <laughs> since you can still at least duplicate one. You just I, can't duplicate I just have telepathy, ones. that's all. Instead of doing that, I'm actually going to fall back to my uh, B-Squad that I have set up here. Oh, and so funnily, you're doing the SPD team, eh? Yes. And funnily enough, uh, the first one is actually somewhat loosely based on Jiras. It's Neosaurus from Dyna. You know why? Because he's a very Godzilla-esque kaiju, but he's different enough that he has spikes and he shoots lasers from his boobs instead of his mouth. Because, hey, why not? Also, he's from Dino, which is a series I love, and his suit is pretty badass. And because he's number one, he is the one I'd probably give my EX form to, because what's better than making a spiky dinosaur even spikier? The question is nothing. For my uh, number two, I'm actually going a bit different, since this is probably one of the more infamous ones. Uh, it's Pestar, because it's essentially just two starfish with a bat head in the middle, though. My pick is more based on his Ultraman-powered incarnation, which looks a lot more crustacean-y, and a lot more like a demented sea creature, as opposed to just two guys in starfish costume holding a bat head in between them. Even though he still does kind of resemble a bat, but he's far more arthropod-esque. And I've always kind of liked that design, as well as the episodes when he's attacking the oil refinery. I always thought those were some good episodes. And I'm going to finish it up with, again, another one of my favorites. And it's from the OG Ultraman. It's Antlar. You know why? Because he's a giant antlion beetle thing. But not to mention he continues to show up time and again. He is a fan favorite design. And not to mention he has some pretty uh, nifty looking side designs. But you know what? When it comes down to it, he's a giant cool looking beetle. And that's all that really matters. He might be onto something here. This beetle thing. All right, no, that's a pretty good choice. Honestly, Neosaurus was actually one of the guys I did consider for my list, but I chose not to, seeing that I didn't really want to duplicate in case Metal did choose. Now, that's the thing. I'm trying to also be original here, like most of us. I find it astonishing that Metal did not actually go for some of the ones that were said by either Mucha and did actually go with some of his alternatives. And so I'm going to go with some of my own alternatives that are going to be very interesting. So, for me, personally, I think I'm going to start off with not my team leader, but a member of my team, which is actually the kaiju known as Maruchi. Now, I'm going to go with his Zora Maruchi form, which is the more modern-day version of the suit. He is mostly known for being a very salmon-slash-old-school, like, ancient fish kind of creature. He's like a bit of a dinosaur mixed with, like, an ancient salmon. And he's better known for having reappeared in Ace, getting his jaw ripped out. However, as the Zora form, 
it's a lot more menacing and it's a lot more gruesome because it's been given like alien DNA and boosted up and has like these weird orbs that look like it can shoot lasers out of it. It's a very cool aquatic kaiju. So Maruchi is mostly going to be my amphibious kind of creature where he'll be on the land. He'll also go underwater if need be. So we're going to need to go airborne now, right? We need to go into the skies. And there is one kaiju in particular that I'm thinking of who is good at going to the skies. And he's a pretty deadly SOB. Yeah, I'm going to go with Gazort. Now, Gazort is an interesting thing in its own right. Because Gazor is a weird, I guess you would say, culmination of weird little life forms in our stratosphere that when you give them enough electromagnetic amplifications of, like, radio waves and other stuff, they merge into one giant, like, flying, almost manta ray-like kite monster that comes down and just devours people. Now, Gazor is in, like, one of the earliest episodes of Ultraman Tiga, reappears later in an episode, and then spawns a new kaiju in Dinah, which comes back to haunt our surviving characters of its previous attacks, which is actually a really cool entity, since it's not entirely supernatural, but it's just these organisms, they're so abundant, allegedly, living in our stratosphere and the upper areas of Earth's levels of oxygen to space, you know, before it goes into orbit, that when they merge together, they're kind of like... I guess you would say Destroya, in a sense, at how they kind of just merge into one host. So I feel like they would be good together. And then my final member of the team, the probably the team leader, I'm going to go with this one. Now, in some cases, he's considered in that area of possibly being the big bad, per se. But since his suit is still eye-to-eye with your basic Ultraman or Sajin, I'm just going to go straight with not basic Zeton, but Hyper Zeton, which has this weird effect of he's a cocoon, he gets into the, like, this big sort of puppet CG kind of monster, but then he shrinks down into this basic form. So it's like a weird, like, think cell, where he's small, big, then small again. And I want to go with Hyper Zeton, only because I really like the aesthetic to him. I would give him the EX form, since regular Zeton also had an EX form. I would go specifically with the Death Scythe version, so he has the Scythe, he would have melee, he'd be very fast, where he's almost on that level of teleportation, just because of his speed alone. And I'd give him the Burst Mode, just because, let's just give him more technical, elemental, and physical DACA, even though they're not in embodiment of guns. I feel like this, you have a good representation of, like, land, sea, space, and air, that you can just put all three together, and you'd have a pretty well-diverse team. Like I said, I did have other alternatives, and most of those alternatives all come from Ultraman Ace being Choju, but I don't know why I would choose them in the first place, just maybe because they're so weird and iconic to a lot of Ultra fans. Other runner-ups we'll talk about in a moment, because some of the ones that I wanted to choose were actually on some of our sent-in lists. But before we get into the sent-in lists from fans and just people we know and friends, let's talk about each of our teams. So, guys, what's your thoughts on teams? Let's go to uh, Mucha with his thoughts on everyone else's team first. Oh, they're probably going to kick my team's ass. I like everybody's team. I like the Boros. I like the bros because they have the same name. It's a great thing. And it actually makes sense, so that's great. I like Hyper Zeton because he's cool. Antwar is awesome, so when Metal chose him, I was like, shit, I should have chose the Antler guy. That was my bad. But then I saw my team, and I was like, shit, my team's gonna die. I don't know how the hell my team's gonna survive anything. I mean, the one is probably the GOAT. He's gonna be the GOAT of your team, essentially. (laughs) Probably. He's gonna carry that team. (laughs) He's gonna Tom Brady it. Oh, shit, that'd be great. Yeah, I like everybody's teams. They're all well-balanced, part of a complete breakfast of tropes and understanding the environment and surroundings of what you want in each battle. Versatility is important in a team, and if you don't have versatility, then that's where you fall and fail. All right, sound out your take on our teams. So I actually really like a lot of you guys' teams. Some of the kaiju I'm not familiar with, so it's sometimes a little bit hard for me to visualize, but I think that, you know, like Mucha said, everyone did a good job balancing. Like, there was a lot of thought and care put into a lot of this to kind of put together teams that had powers and abilities that would complement each other or balance out others' weaknesses. So I think that overall, it's a lot of great thought and consideration taken in place to make sure that the teams would be effective in battle. Metal, your take on the team, since I know you know oh. a good portion of them. <laughs> Yeah, and again, I will admit that I had a similar idea to Mucha's of just going with Godzilla suit reuses. I was originally going to go with Gomas and Jiras, but again, I had backups. 
Again, uh, really solid team. I really love Sound Out Steaming, too, with the Barrows. That makes a hell of a lot of sense. And like I said, thematically, hey, it works. And yours, Wheelchair, as always. Slightly off, I should say off the beaten path picks, but very sensible and quite synergistic. So I must say they were quite cromulent. In all, they were all very, very well thought out. All right, so my take on this. I'm going to run this down. With Mucha, I'm not going to lie. I, too, sort of had a similar idea because I wanted to use Gomez, too. Gomez is probably one of my all-time favorite suits, not just because it is a Godzilla, but because he's the only Godzilla clone out of, like, the one or two that they've done to actually get a brand new suit made for the modern era. So by having Gomez still around, we've seen him in, like, X, we've seen him in Mega Monster Battle. I wanted to use him. But the problem with Gomez is, is like, he's, like Mucha said, very gun like So he just kind of digs. Like, if he was not just subterranean, but also an aquatic base user, I would have been so into that shiat. Uh, Giros. Giros is one of those ones where it's one of the cheaper <laughs> reuses of a Godzilla suit in the franchise. It's the most iconic one, too, because of that. But he's technically good because he does recreate a lot of Godzilla's abilities. The only thing that's ludicrous is obviously his fin. Uh, the one, having seen Ultraman the next, really good character, really good creature. Had he kept growing, he probably would have became one of those do sex machina super CG kaiju. Like, because he's supposed to be, like, absorbing everything and adaptability to almost everything. So I feel like if this guy didn't get stopped, he would have become one of those, in quotations, banned big bads. Sound out theming of, like, the Barrow or Boros, like, having that bro kind of theme was actually kind of unique and interesting. Luckily, we've had so many kaiju in the last 20 years with that kind of, like, ending or theme of, like, a sound in their name coming around is a good idea. I do gotta say it's kind of interesting. One, they're all kind of based on either the ideology of being dogs, but the fact that most of them are all Terran-based means that sound out would be licked in a fight if it came to sky and or water. But honestly, for a base ground team, he's got a lot of consistency going here with at least range, up close and physical, and then you got like one that can kind of do both. So you got like a really good middle ground there. Metal going out of the gates with Neosaurus, really good. I'm glad that you personally did remember to choose this SOB because if you didn't choose him, I was going to. He's a big SOB. He's badass. He's like super strong. He's a very Godzilla meets Destroyer-esque kind of kaiju if you've ever seen him. And he's just badass. So giving him the EX upgrade, Rayonic Burst, really good. Pestar. Now, I personally don't like him in any of his incarnations, but the fact that you went with the powered one, which we will make sure the image is the correct one for the video, great choice, even though it's the better of almost any Paystar. Antlar, pretty decent, very basic, but very iconic, being seen since Ultraman Max to now, after being originally, you know, in the very first Ultra series. And my team, this one was very across the board, since I had, like, a huge canvas to choose from. I had to, like, narrow it down, so I chose some of the most random ones you could. And I did get little borderline there, like I said, with Hyper Zeton. But since he's been in the show and used as a weekly one-off villain, I just went with that. That was my ideology here for choosing him, was that he at least appeared in a couple of episodes, so he's been debunked as being a big bad now. So overall, though, uh, what you guys think of this overall, like, uh, Neo Mega Monster Battle kind of load your battle nizer discussion so far? What are your thoughts on having done this? Would you want to do something like this again in the future, choosing different teams? Sure. Oh, for sure. I already have different ideas. <laughs> of course. And, like, from time to time, we will change up how the rules go, so we can maybe do an episode where we can have at least one Deuce Ex Machina kind of character on our team. Like, I feel like we'll do one where it's still Ultra-based, but then maybe on occasion we'll do ones where they're not from Ultraman either. You know, it's like, oh, we'll do one where it's everything that's not a full-on Ultra series. That means Gridman, Fireman, Mirror Man, all those guys that have exclusive ones. (laughs) You get what I'm saying? Like, we'll do stuff like that. Or we'll do stuff where it's, like, specifically Mecha. This is going to be one where we could just spend an episode doing themes like that. But overall, now, since we talked and reviewed our actual teams, let me go and get the lists for Facebook and Twitter for the people who submitted their entries in. All right, guys? So just give me one moment. 
All right, and now I have our lists. So first off, I'm going to go through our Facebook people. Most of these people who've contributed are actual close personal friends of some of ours, and you've either heard on our podcast or previous podcasts or just us in general with them in other shows throughout the internet if you followed our careers. First off, let's go with a guy known as Jetty B. Money or Captain B. Money if you know him. He's kind of been around in the tokusatsu community. So he also chose Hyper Zeton in its Imago form, which is the humanoid form. And originally he didn't read the rules, so like he just put like a lot of goats. When I mean like goats, like they were like all the ones that we were like banned. He had like King Joe on there, and he also had actually Chaos Header in its final form. Now Chaos Header is considered like a Zogu, so no matter what, it would be banned in that case. So then he went back and retooled it a little, so he chose one of the kaiju that Chaos Header actually possessed. And he changed King Joe out for Gorg Fire Goza from the actual Ultraman X film. Then we also have our lady friend. You might know her as Toma. She actually chose actually three interesting kaiju guys. She chose Bemstar, Black King, and Zar Garas. Now, if I recall correctly, Black King and Bemstar are both the return of Ultraman kaiju, but they've also made more recent appearances. Black King, obviously, in Ultraman X is one in case, and Bemstar as well, also in Ultraman X due to the obvious armors and battles. Zargaras actually, I think, was in the original Ultraman series and was that kaiju that somehow was adapting to survive and evolve, where, like, he eventually had, like, cannons growing out of, like, his back or torso, and that was her choice. And then we have the man, myth, and legend, Ukiya Seed, the guy who runs Orange Wrens. It is his team of Zeton, basic Zeton, basic Pandon, not the king form, not any other form, and Ella King. Now, Ella King has an asterisk on it because it's still one of Ray's members, but we'll let him slide just because two out of the three, we don't mind. So that was Facebook. What are you guys' thoughts on the teams from Jetty B Money, Toma, and Ukiya? Uh, I'm going to go with Metal first this time around, and I'll go in reverse, working all, my way back. All, all around pretty solid, except for Ukiya kind of breaking the rules a little bit there. But, <laughs> I mean, you know, I... Actually, Bill broke most of the rules. Oh, yeah. But in all, all pretty damn solid kaiju. Again, I'm not intimately familiar with all of them, since I'm not an ultra fanatic like the chaired one is here. But the ones I know are, again, some solid lists, I think. All right, sound out your take on uh, the lists. A lot of great picks and a lot of interesting choices, and I like how kaiju has a lot of variety to all of, like, we have this many kaiju means that there's this many different variations of teams out there. All right, Mucha, your take on the Facebook submissions. I like them all. They're all, all pretty interesting team dynamics going on. I really love Black King, and he was going to be one of my choices, but then I thought, you know what, fuck it. I'm going Godzilla all the way through, baby. And that's why I regret my decisions. All of them. All of them! Just kidding. But yeah, I like Black King a lot. I like all the monsters that were chosen, because, you know what, monsters are cool. All right. And now we have just the two submissions on Twitter. First off, let's go to Spankzilla85. Now, if anyone knows who that Twitter handle stands for, it is obviously former Godzilla comic artist and writer Matt Frank, as well as the guy who does the Redman comics. And his team is actually very interesting because he also has Gomez, like Mucha, but he also has from Tiga, Melba and Lelones. Now, Melba is one of the first kaiju seen in Tiga, and Lelones is a later episode in the first arc, which is a giant mutated, like, fish creature thing that kind of just, like, burps and jumps and bounces all over people. Metal probably remembers it because it's the one that became our Hero Club meme of Reyna opening up her shirt to reveal her swim outfit, and we photoshopped in the Hero Club logo over top of it. (laughs) That's the best way to remember that one. And then we also have one from a Twitter account that actually I should go follow called Let's Talk Ultraman. Their actual option was Neosaurus from Dyna, just like Metal, Lideros from Cosmos, and Agrigia from Mabius. And from what I know, having Googled, or should I say, wiki the kaiju, Lideros is a very dragonic dinosaur bird monster. It can fly. It can do pretty much most basic dragon dinosaur-esque kaiju things. So that sounds like a good choice for basic air. And Agria is actually a, like, space manta ray kind of creature, where it flies through space, it flies through air, and it's also basic aquatic. It's almost like that alien in Ben 10 that he had, the Manta Ray. What was the Manta Ray one called again, Sound Out? Uh, Jet Ray. Yeah, Jet Ray, where it could breathe in space without any atmosphere kind of thing or shielding. 
So Agria is like almost that equivalent. It literally can just fly through space at ease, go into an atmosphere, and just adapt right to water. It's one of those interesting ones. So those are our two from Twitter. So we didn't really get that much, but hey, we're still a small channel. We're still a small podcast. We're still a small website. Uh, Visible Ninja, your take on the two Twitter submissions. Well, great minds think alike when it comes to Neosaurus. Uh, otherwise, like I said, not too much else to really say about it, other than I think what I know about these kaiju, they're, again, solid picks. Sound out your take on the Twitter ones. Again, a lot of great picks. Without going, like, super deep into researching every single kaiju to figure out, like, what the best balances are and all that, it's solid stuff. Mucha. It's all cool in the hood, G. Uh, I like Leodoros, based on what I saw from Cosmos, because I like dragons, and dragons are cool. That's all I have to say. I mean, everybody else has already said pretty much what we all agree on, that pretty much they're pretty solid lists. Everybody makes an interesting team when they put their minds to it and what they really want from what, they, uh, what they're desiring for a team. Yeah, that's really true. So, like I said, this is pretty much the bulk of our episode. It was a very short episode. We just wanted to do a small little theme episode, help get people either interested, not just with our hosts in watching other Ultra series, but maybe our audience. Maybe by seeing these creatures and kaiju, you'll want to go check out not just the episode they premiered in, but watch the entire series, hopefully, if it hooks you. So that's like a good way to like get your feelers in the water is what kaiju designs are there for you, and then maybe see if that show fits your fancy. And I think that works out really well right now. I think it's a good way to sort of get people in, because, I mean, when you have also Mega Monster Battle, it's a show that's mostly about just kaiju on kaiju action. It's almost like the Ultra Fight series, where it's Ultraman fighting the monsters, whereas this one's just basic kaiju on kaiju action. It does do a lot of cool things, and I know it does also change the perspective of fans who came in possibly seeing that season and moving forward with the Ultra series going, oh, I thought it was only about monsters and monsters. So, overall, you can use Mega Monster Battle to start finding out what monsters you like, and that can maybe help point you into the direction of what show you might want to start with. Like we said a moment ago before we read our submissions, we'll probably do this again in the future. Everyone seems like this is a fun idea. I already have my team made, man. Yeah, you probably have a team made after watching everyone come in and go, Hey, Mucha, wow, you did not plan that well. But hey, we're going to curb stomp you. Listen, my next team is going to be greater, even greater than this team. You can't stop it, because I have a secret weapon that no one's going to ever expect. It all depends on what the rules and rubric will say. <laughs> Fuck your and, rules, and, okay? And... <laughs> I'll go around them. I went around your rules once, Wheels. I can do it again. You didn't go around my rules this time. You didn't. Hey, he I'll never go... goes around your rules. He's always on his good behavior, except when he does our podcast, and then in which case it's a disaster. He's actually on his behavior during your podcast. The problem is you and he just start going off each other on saying, Hey, man, you know that comic that really pissed me off? And then you guys get really depressed and want to kill each other. It's not kill each other, just kill ourselves. It's different. No, it's more like you form a pact going, Hey, if they release one more book like this, let's go off each other. We basically drank Kool-Aid. Exactly, because, you know, the infamous, Hey, did you know Batman's dick was in a comic? And you were like, no, it wasn't. And then that's how the show ended. Hey, it's not worse than what I thought my original team was, was going to have Gomez and Litra. Come on, could you imagine having those two on the same team? They would start fighting each other, dude. <laughs> exactly! It'd, it'd be, be like It'd be like putting, what is it, Abelos and, uh, what's his face, you know, the two monsters, the green one and the blue one that were in yeah. the original Ultra Bat. They'd be like, Durr, I gotta fight this guy. It's like, what? <laughs> it'd be great. Nah, that'd be I terrible. Have, it'd be greatest dynamic ever, and then the one just watches, going like, what the hell? No, knowing the one, he would absorb them and just be like, your essence is now mine. He'd be like, I'm tired of your shit. <laughs> He's saying so now. Your soul is mine. Yo, I also realize this, because of the one, he's like your Mega Man of the team. Like, he'll yeah. start killing off other teammates' as kaiju or other kaiju opposing him, and he'll just start absorbing them. And he's like, now yeah. I got your pa- Oh my god, now I want What's-His-Face to be the voice of the one. Oh god. <laughs> now I got your power. Oh god. What was it, Ian Corbett, the fucking voice of uh Cheetor or whatever, was the voice oh, of Mega yeah. Man? Anyway, so, so since we're going to start wrapping up now, people who have not sent their submissions in can still send in their teams in the comments below and or on social media. We'll read them on a future episode, not specifically the next episode, unless we have the time. And we're going to start wrapping up now, like I said. So like I said, just send those submissions in. We will get to them at a later date. How we might just save your submissions for when we do the next actual load our battle nizers. So, nevertheless, though, this has been Los Angeles Day Tokusatsu, episode 91. I'm going to start with, actually, Mucha on how you can follow him on social media. I mean, why would you? Look at my team. 
You don't want to follow me. It's like entering hell and never leaving. But anyway, if you want to enter hell and not leave, you can follow me on Twitter at Janitor Joker, because I clean up everybody's messes, just don't tell anyone. Uh, and I also do a thing called Toka Warriors, and that's on the Facebook and on the Twitter. And then you can just follow a bunch of people that are just part of it, because why not? Last word of uh, note, uh, Mega Monster Battle is like boxing, except it's less rigged. All right, Visible Ninja, how can people follow you? Follow me on Twitter at Visible Ninja Zero. Uh, you can hit me up on YouTube at Visible Ninja Dojo. Check out uh, my little live show I run Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern, where we talk Gundam and meta series, Tokusatsu, and who knows what else. It's a usually a good time or a bungling time, depending on how my mouth wants to perform that night. Anyways, check me out. Sound out. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Sound out 12. All right. I'm Wheelchair21 on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. My Instagram is Taja underscore Doyle. That's how you can easily contact me. With Hero Club, it's always Hero Club for Life for YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, so on and so forth. And the website is hero-club.com. And you'll get to hear that again in the outro. So we'll see you again next week for episode frickin' 92. See you all then. Hey, it's Wheelchair21, and thanks again for listening to an all-new episode of Los Inglenables de Tokusatsu. If you want to hear more content or see more content from the Hero Club YouTube channel, we're going to need you to subscribe, like, comment with some feedback, and share this channel with a friend. We also would like you to check out our website, hero-club.com, and follow us on various social media outlets just by looking up Hero Club for Life, as well as the stores you see are where we shop. Anyways, thanks again, and we'll see you all next time.